hearts and our minds. Father, we thank you. I honor you. We know that we're not perfect, oh God, none of us. We confess our sin before you, Almighty God. We ask you to touch everyone that's not here tonight. We ask you to touch each one. Blessed be your name. I want to thank you, Lord. In spite of what appearance, Lord, I got, I pray in the name of Jesus. In spite of what might seem tough. God, we're going to ride out every storm. We cannot quit, Lord God. We thank you, Jesus. I ask you to strengthen the men of God in this place, Lord. Strengthen each one in this place. Blessed be your name. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. Blessed be your name. Your holy name. Every troubled heart. Every troubled heart, God, we pray. We take heart. In this world, you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer. Take heart. For I have overcome the world, Lord God. We thank you for what you did on the cross. We plead the blood in the name of Jesus over every circumstance, over every power of darkness, over every every force that would try to manipulate and, and work in the unseen realm. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Lord. I thank you. We need you, God. We need a holy, sovereign God. We need a holy, sovereign God, an omnipresent God who's here for us even when we aren't here for Him. In spite of my flesh, in spite of my weakness and my character weaknesses, oh God, I ask you to forgive me. Thank you, Jesus. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Create in me a clean heart and renew in me a right spirit, Lord. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me, O oh God. Let the words of my mouth, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto Thee, O oh God. Come on, hallelujah. Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus. The Bible says He gives us the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. From the inward man, from the inside out, hallelujah, Jesus. I will praise You from the inside out. From the inside out. In spite of my how I feel, Lord. In spite of my leprosy. In spite of my leprosy, Lord. In spite of who I am. It's not about who I am. It's about what you did and who you are. I will praise you, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We cry, let it rain. 
Lord reigns. Let the earth be glad. Let the distant shores rejoice. Clouds of thick darkness surround Him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of His throne. A fire goes before Him and consumes His foes at every side. His mountains melt like wax before the Lord. Before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens declare His righteousness. And all peoples will see His glory. So let it rain. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of heaven. We cry. Let it rain. Let it rain. Open the floodgates of hell and let it rain. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. We praise you. Blessed be your name. Your wonderful name, Jesus. And I will live. And I will live. Nothing compares, hallelujah, to you. Hallelujah. Because nothing compares, Lord, to you, Jesus. Shout to the Lord. Shout to the Lord. Nothing compares. Nothing compares. Shout to the Lord. Hallelujah. So worthy God. 
Blessed be your name. Shout to the Lord. Because nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Lord. Come on, let's show him some love tonight. Hallelujah. Wonderful. Excellent is your name, Lord. Excellent is your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. you I will magnify you I will honor you Lord Jesus for you alone exalted in heaven and earth with my mouth with my hands I will glorify the God of heaven and earth who created all things all my present omniscient all powerful majestic marvelous great in all your ways all your ways all your ways oh God think about his love Think about His goodness Think about His grace that's brought us through For as high as the heavens above So great is the measure of our Father's love Great is the measure of our Father's love more time. Think about His love. Think about His goodness. Think about His grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so 
great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. You are awesome in this place, a mighty God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you, alas, we praise. You are awesome in this place, mighty God. He is awesome in this place. Mighty God, you are awesome in this place, Abba Father. You are worthy of all praise. To you, alas, we praise. You are awesome in this place, Mighty God. We'll finish up with this last. I'm addicted to this song, so I can't help it. I don't care. You're gonna get it every. You're gonna get it every time if I have to, because I just love it. Oh 
Let everything that has breath praise you, the Lord. Praise Him in timbrel and psaltery and psalmist. Praise, praise Him in song. Praise Him in dance. Let everything that has breath. With everything, everything, we will shine for you, glory. Be glorified, Lord. Wonderful in your goodness. Marvelous and excellent is your name in all the earth. We praise you, Jesus. You know, I preach today. In Acts chapter 16, there was a, name, a man named Paul and Silas. And, and Paul went through some stuff, some heartache, some hurt. And they, they got thrown in, in jail for <laughs> executing the will of God. In fact, they delivered a, a sorceress from an unclean spirit. And they ended up in jail for that. Strange. It's kind of the butt backward world we live in, right? It's kind of where we're going. That's kind of how society's moving. And and Paul and Silas, instead of looking at their situation as an obstacle, they began to look at it as an opportunity and they began to sing praises to the Most High God. And the Bible says at midnight, at darkest, at midnight, in the realm of night, they began to praise God. They began to sing to the Most High God. And, and the Bible says the place shaked. The Bible says God sent an earthquake and He sent an angel to shake the place. And their bonds were loosed by the power of Almighty God. But that wasn't the end of the story, Pastor Terry. The end of the story was yet to come because what was meant for bad actually was about to work for very good because there was a jailer there and he was in a Philippian jailer and he didn't know God he didn't see God he didn't have God and he needed God and, and the Bible says the Philippian jailer grabbed his sword and he was about to fall on his own sword he about to commit suicide after the natural way and the Bible says that Paul said don't do yourself any harm Stop. You see, he had a choice. He could have finished his life right then and there. It was to spawn it. Maybe, maybe Mrs. Philippian Jailer gave him a hard time earlier in the day. And he was having a rough day. And maybe it, it just got a little bit worse that day. And maybe he was about to end it all. And, and the Bible says he was about to fall on his sword and finish himself. But Paul says, stop. Don't do yourself no harm his ending was about to become his beginning he had to come to an end of his himself he was brought to the to the, the very brink of his own sanity pastor Terry kind of like Christians are in this day because the Bible says in Daniel 725 that the spirit of Antichrist is in the earth to wear out the saints of the Most High God and what I see in Christianity today is a whole bunch of Christians about ready to fall on their own sword, so to speak. They've had enough. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired. And, and, and they've, they're, they're despondent. And they don't know where to look. But I'm going to be Paul here tonight. And I'm, gonna hear, I'm here to tell you to stop. Don't fall on that sword. There's hope. And the Bible says... That the Philippian jailer said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And Paul began to open up 
the word of God. He said, if thou believest that Jesus is the Christ, thou shalt be saved in all your house. Not just you. So not only his beginning was his beginning, but it became his family's beginning. You see, he, if, you, you see, Jamie, Brother Jamie, if, if he would have committed suicide and fell on his own sword, not only would have he lost out, everyone around him would have lost out. But God turns endings to beginnings. Aren't you thankful? Yes, God. <laughs> Aren't you thankful? <clears throat> come on. Sometimes we got to come to an end of ourselves. Sometimes we go. Sometimes we got to come to the brink of falling on our own spiritual sword, so to speak, until God can move and God finds us and pursues us right there. I feel the Spirit of the Lord ministering tonight. I'll tell you what, Pastor Terry, I didn't have it tonight. I didn't have it. I didn't feel like coming here tonight. I'm guilty as charged. But the reality is I feel something right now. I feel the Spirit of the Lord. The Bible says the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon Samson. Hallelujah. I feel like God's doing something in this place. For somebody in this place. Come on with everything. Hallelujah. Your ending's about to become your beginning. Hallelujah. You cannot find it in this world. This world will abandon you. It will destroy you. It is the sword. And he took the Philippian jailer down into the water and all his household and baptized him in the name of Jesus. And that man found salvation. His ending became his beginning in the name of Jesus. I feel God's doing something tonight. Woo! Yes. The reality is nothing will change until the pain of staying the same is greater than the pain of not changing. Did you hear what I just said? In other words, nothing changes if no thing has changed. In other words, let me repeat that. Nothing's going to change until the pain of remaining the same becomes greater than the pain of changing. I believe God wants to move in this assembly. I want the Holy Ghost to have His way. Don't you, Pastor Terry? Oh, yeah. Thank you, Jesus. We want the Spirit, not by might. Uh, this ain't your grandma's church. Hallelujah. If you come in just to expect it to twiddle your thumbs. Hallelujah. That ain't my business. Amen. I'm here to praise God. I'm here to glorify Him with a loud voice. With everything that is in me. Hallelujah. Let everything that has breath praise you the Lord. Praise you the Lord. For He alone is worthy in heaven and earth. Somebody's ending is about to become a beginning in this place tonight. Hallelujah. The reality is we get the monkey off our back. The Barnum and Bailey remains in town. That's the fact. Lions and tigers and bears, oh my. I get one thing off my back, but I don't deal with the rest of the circus in my life. Hallelujah. God wants everything to succumb to His perfect will. God help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. I'm not here pointing a finger at you because I got issues. I got character defects. I got defaults. And, and, and the reality is if Christ don't help me, I'm, I'm a man most miserable. If he can't forgive me, I'm in trouble. But the Bible says all manner, all manner, all manner of sin shall be forgiven among the sons of men. All. I don't care what's been done in this place. I don't care what you've done. There's a God who's greater as far as the east is from the west. That's how far my God shall remove your sin. Hallelujah. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. That means God knocked out adultery. That means God knocked out fornication. That God means God knocked out abortion. That means nothing can, can withstand the forgiving, loving kindness of an almighty God. Oh, hallelujah. I've given everything I got tonight. It's 10 minutes, but it's my best 10 minutes. I know one speed, and that's rabbit. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Everything we will shout for your glory. And our hearts they cry. Be glorified, be lifted high above all names. 
difference. I don't even have to look at the keyboard right now because I feel the Spirit of God playing right here. Hallelujah. We will shout for your praise. You see, without the Holy Ghost, I'm Clark Kent. Without the Spirit of God in my life, I'm Clark Kent and the devil's kryptonite. And I have no match. I am no match for the big bad wolf who wants to huff and puff and blow your house down. But with God, I shall do valiantly. With God, I shall leap over a wall. Through God, I shall run through a truth. Through God, I shall do valiantly. Hallelujah. Through God, Goliath can't stand. Through God, a lion and a bear are succumbed in the hand of an almighty, all-powerful God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, people may call me radical, but anything. I'll tell you what, if you go to church twice in this generation, you're radical. <laughs> twice a month. Hey, them, them folks are radical over there. They go to church twice a month. That's the day we're living in. That's how Christianity is right now. But the Bible says I would rather much be hot for God than lukewarm. Burn for him instead of burning yes. for us. So sometimes God throws a shark in my tank. Right? I'm going to repeat this and then we're going to cut our preacher loose because he's a great man of God. Real quick, we're going to announce he is Volunteer of the Year Queen Hannah Boot Camp. Isn't that awesome? Let's give him a round of applause because that's amazing. Yes. He'll be attending. He, he was honored at our, our uh, local banquet on Thursday. On Thursday. ADD kicking in. And uh, he did a wonderful job. He spoke in front of our banquet, in front of some dignitaries from Harrisburg. Pretty amazing. God had his way that night, didn't he? Some hearts were touched that night. And uh, he will be traveling to Harrisburg, hopefully with me, on August the 23rd. So that's exciting to be honored at a statewide banquet. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Doesn't God position us for success? Let me get back to the shark. You know what the Japanese do in their sushi? They take a shark. When their fish get tasteless, they sense their fish getting not as crisp. I guess if a fish can be crisp. They take a shark and they fire it in their sushi tank. And the shark makes all them fish swim a lot faster. <laughs> and I think sometimes God looks down on the tank of life. And on our personal fish tanks, right? And he says, you know what? I love them. So I'm going to fire a shark, in, a shark or two in their tank and keep them swimming. Because if I didn't fire no trials their way, they would just be bland. The reality is, and you're going to get a double portion tonight. I'm just speaking this and then we'll turn on Pastor Luke. Because I feel the Holy Spirit speaking tonight. Abraham was called a friend of God, right? Wasn't he? Yes. He found favor with God. Does God play favorites? Some, some, most people say no. What do you think? Give me a shake. Does God play favorites? I say yeah. yeah. And uh, nothing wrong with that. Everyone, everyone, I get a whole bunch of variety of answers. I do. I believe God plays favorites. Because he told Mary, thou art highly favored. Yeah. Highly favored. Now I'm not saying you go bow down to a statue of Mary. Have fun. That's not good. She's a woman just like us. She sinned just like us, right? That's right? But she was highly favored. So Abraham found a place with God where he was one of his favorites. And he transitioned from a place called servanthood to friendship. Therefore, it was called Abraham the friend of God. To the point where Abraham, when God was ready to bust Sodom and Gomorrah up, little old Abraham said, hey God, let's talk. Amen. You follow me here? Woo. I'm getting ornery tonight. That's a country world. Word. So Abraham had a little pull. That's what I'm trying to say. Now you're getting the picture. So when God was going to bust up those sinful cities, He was going to light them up like a Roman 4th of July Roman candle. And He ended up doing it. Little old Abraham says, Hey God, 
if there be if there be 50 righteous don't bust that place up God said hey you're my boy I'm going to speak plain English street slang I can do with the boot campers well you found favor in my sight so guess what if there's 50 I'm not busting the place up so Abraham pushes it well you know what God I found favor I'm your boy I took my boy up to an altar got my knife up in the air and I didn't do it remember that God remember me so he said 40 well no it wasn't 40 so he said okay God 30 20 10 there wasn't 10 there was one One man can have a little bit of pull. You see, folks, we want to transition from servanthood because a servant, Hannah, doesn't know what his master's doing. He doesn't clue him in. He just says, hey, go dig that ditch. Okay, dig a ditch. Or a car wash pit like I used to do. Or clean an outdoor gas station restroom like I used to do. Not fun, by the way. Just do it. I'm a servant. I don't know no better. I'm doing this for a paycheck. But a friend. Oh, come on. Come on, a friend. Would I transition to friendship? The servant title is gone. I begin to have pull and, and I begin to intercede for some folks that are lost. And God says, okay, I'm not going to bust them up either, even though they deserve it. Right? Because a friend gets clued in in his master's house. No longer a servant, but a friend of God. How many want to be a friend of God tonight? Raise your hand in the name of Jesus. How many want to move to a different place with God? I believe it's going to happen one more time on this course. With everything, everything, we will shout for your glory. Come on. Everything, everything, we will shout for your praise. Hallelujah. Man, if you'll just lift, open your mouth and glorify the God of heaven and earth. The Bible says He gives the prayer, garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. The Bible says, Whosoever believeth in Him, let him not be ashamed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want the Holy Ghost in this place. Not by might and not by power. But by Your Spirit, Lord. By Your Spirit, Lord. We will shine for praise hallelujah 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 he'll break every chain break every chain break every chain come on do you believe it tonight I feel the Holy Ghost moving tonight he'll break every chain break every chain break every chain because there is power there is power in the name of Jesus. Come on. Wonder working power in the name of Jesus. Come on. Do you believe it today? I believe it. There is power in the name of Jesus. And he'll break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Do you believe it? I want God to move in this place. I want God to move through the speaker tonight. He'll break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There ain't one person in here that don't have them. Hallelujah. I don't care. You might think I'm a spiritual Holy Ghost Superman, but I beg to differ with you. I fight Clark Kent just like you. Hallelujah. I struggle just like you. I battle kryptonite just like you just like you just like you we're all in this together people because he'll break every chain break every chain break every chain 
He'll break every chain, break every chain. He's a chain breaker. Hallelujah. He's a chain breaker in this place. And I got him, so do you. I live, I'm a fallen human in a fallen world in desperate need of a risen Savior. Can you say amen? Jesus, 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 Jesus. No name like your name. No name like your name, Lord. No name like your name. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. My voice is shot, but I'm going to give everything I got to God. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I don't want to be like any other church. I want to be different. I want to be different. I don't want to operate where the world operates. Let us be as humble as clay. Jesus, forgive us, Lord. Form us and us. Forgive us. We've made mistakes, all of us. All of us. Who has prayer requests tonight? Brother, uh, continue prayer. Really struggling with a stomach issue, and uh, prayer for both of us for stress. Yes, Lord. Anyone else? Uh, remember, it would be Paul, my son Paul's mother in law. And her, her home life is just devastated. Her husband left. She might lose her home. Um, we pray that God would help her. Yes. Help her family. I was supposed to pray last when I forgot, so God help my memory. <laughs> right. Yes. I have Jenica, one. Go I'm sorry. Ahead. Go ahead, brother. Okay. Uh, Jenica, um, it's pretty sick. Birthday's tomorrow, so and she gets better for that. Yes. Um, and for our house, that uh, we all just kind of come together as one, mm -hmm. uh, which would be wonderful. Let's keep our house in prayer. The spirit of Antichrist is in the earth. We may not know who he is. He doesn't have a physical appearance. I believe he's on the earth, but he hasn't revealed himself yet. Go ahead, brother. Uh, at our church in Pegram, we have an elder that I really believe, you know, he's saved the Holy Spirit. He goes on you know, mission trips all over. But uh, he's a Freemason, apparently. And he wears the ring. And we've our uh, pastors approached him once about it, and he, I just didn't think he had the heart to really rebuke it, you know what I mean? And so it's kind of a touchy subject, and we've been kind of waiting for the right time to maybe have a talk with him or without, you know, it's, it's hard to prove to him, you know, that it might not be a good thing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I might have to play the fifth on that one. I, I agree wholeheartedly, but I don't want to touch on it at the moment, but it's a deep subject. I highly recommend people to research it. And the book I would suggest, I have a book, Brother Jamie, if you need it. It's called Into the Light by Jim Shaw. I have the book. He's an ex-33rd degree Freemason. And um, he came out. And there was reasons he came out. So. And uh, if you want that, I'll get that for you. I'll bring it next week for you, okay? Highly recommend it because you can take that from me, but if you get it from a, a source that was on the inside and reached the highest pinnacle of Freemasonry, did you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. It, I could sit there and preach on blue in the face, but when someone comes out and says, hey, look, I was there. This is what we drank out of a skull at the 33rd degree. We uh, swore allegiance to Abaddon at the 17th degree. They asked me to spit on the cross at another degree. <laughs> asked me if I was a Christian and said no at, at the 33rd degree. And they said, okay, you go through this door. And another guy right beside him asked him if he was a Christian. Heck no, I never intend to be. He said, you're going onward and upward and went through the other door at an interview for his 33rd degree ceremony. So there, I gave you a little bit. Oh, yeah, I know. The steep stuff. Every Egyptian deity has sworn allegiance to pretty much within Freemasonry. So there, I couldn't stop Forgive me, Lord. I'll pre-repent. But a lot of people, and remember, at the lowest levels, they don't even know what they're into. That's what I think. Yeah. Exactly. At the lowest levels, they don't know. And they, and they do good work, some of them. Right. If they knew what that little Shriner's hat meant, they'd probably never wear the thing again, though. As it has the crescent moon for Allah on it. 
Well, how can you serve two masters? You can't. You can't serve all on Jesus, right? No man can serve two masters. The reality is 72% of Americans right now believe that all on Jesus are the same. 72. They're the same God. Americans. Barnett, George Barnett survey. Even worse, 69% of Catholic folks don't believe in a hell. I'm not busting up on Catholics because get ready for this. 65% of Protestants don't believe in a hell or Satan. He's only figured of evil. 2006, George Barna survey. 69% of professed Catholics believe no hell, no Satan. 65% of Protestant folks, no hell, no Satan. Does that scare you? Because the Bible talks about those things, right? So which Bible are them folks reading? Different one than I am, right? Synthetic Christianity. And that's what I see today. And I believe it grieves the heart of God. But it's our job to restore, Jamie, Brother Jamie, and people into right standing with God, right? Amen. Maybe we'll be their shark in their tank. But it'll be good. Because it'll make them swim a little faster and dig a little bit deeper and search a little harder. Any requests before we turn over to Pastor Terry? Let's all stand and pray. And then we'll take up the offering and then we'll cut Pastor Terry loose. Um, Brother Jamie, you feel comfortable leading us in prayer today? Sure. Thank you, brother. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight in our humility. We humble ourselves, Lord. And we just take anything that's holding us back or holding us down. We just put it in front of you at the altar, Lord. And now to the cross, Lord. Lord forgive us. We reach out to you. We cry out to you, Lord. We need you. We're weak without you, Lord. We cry out to you. We lift you up daily. Lord, I just pray that whatever we're dealing with day in, day out, that just remember that you're going to pull us through and we're going to mature through you, Lord. Sometimes we've got to get through it. Lord, we just need to rely on you. Your grace is sufficient for us every day. Oh, no matter what Jesus, we do. yes. Your yes. mercy is so great, never changing. It's so beautiful. pray that you give us spiritual oneness as a body of Christ, not just here, but in the whole body of Christ. I just pray that you bring your anointings upon us all over. Let the spirit move in our lives and let us revive the spirit in our lives. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen. Sister Hannah, would you come and take the offering? Without further ado, our volunteer of the year, Pastor Terry Cook. Amen. God bless him. Thank you so much, Lee. Um, as I said on, on Thursday night uh, during our the banquet, I said it's nice. I'll I'll appreciate this tonight. It means a lot tonight. Um, but let's get back to work. Uh, yes. I don't want to I don't want to tarry too long in places of um, applause or anything like that because it's not about us. Uh, I'm in this not not for my name to be known, but for His to be made known, and not for me to be revealed, but for Him to Jesus, be revealed. Because Jesus. if it's if it's just Terry's name that's going to be known, then uh, t you're you're going to need a lot of help. Um, Terry's name ain't going to help you one bit. Uh, you're not going to be able to say, "Well, I remember Terry had said this," or "I remember uh, when Terry had done that." Terry uh, prayed for me, so I know I'm going to be all right now. We got to have a relationship with right. Him, and so it's His name that has the power, right? So it's not about Lee. It's not about me. Uh, right. It's not about anybody that's in here, but Jesus. it's about the man, the God that we serve, right? right. It's about man. Him, Woo. and so it's not us. Uh, and and it was it was a wonderful time Thursday night. I really appreciated uh, the time that we had there and the recognition uh, that everybody got. Uh, different factions were there and stuff, but uh, we're all serving one purpose, hopefully. Right. Um, 
but to always remember that we're servants uh, and, and a servant, the responsibility of a servant. And, and sometimes when I'm not going to get on into this because we got a message tonight, but one of the one of the faults, one of the downfalls in, in popular TV, especially Christianity, but but it, this happens in, in other felt, uh, congregations apart from the television cameras, is that, that the pastor oftentimes will think he's he's up here, and then we got the folks, uh, the, the the people, the common right. folks, that they're down here, and they they got to look up and, and and see him. And there is some honor and some reverence that, that is necessary for leadership, but but true leadership recognizes that they're a servant. Right. That, that we're here to serve you, and that we're here to serve the body, and that leadership, uh, true leadership, Jesus exemplified true leadership when he washed the feet of the disciples. Right. Yes, and so we're here to wash your feet. We're here to get up underneath you, not pull you and say, hey, you got to come up to where I am. No, we're going to do the work and get down underneath you and push you up. Because that's the responsibility and the role of leadership. And uh, it was a nice night. And uh, again, I, I thank uh, the boot camp for the recognition. And it means a lot. Uh, it means a lot to be able to go out there and touch those, those young men and young women's lives. Uh, to be a voice of encouragement. To be a voice of truth in that place. Um, to be a voice that sometimes maybe they didn't have. A fatherly type figure. A, a, a role model, if you will. And all these things are wonderful. Uh, but it's not about us. It's about him and making his great name known. Yes. And, uh, I'm thankful for that opportunity. I'm thankful. I, I just, it's such a wonderful pleasure to be able to, to be a part of that uh, and to work alongside you, Pastor Lee. It, it, it means so much to me. Uh, my life has really taken a different turn uh, from where it used to be. And I'm thankful. Uh, that's going to kind of segue into tonight. I'm thankful that, that God broke me in many ways and broke me in many places and brought me through Sometimes just clinging on some broken things, but it was a, a big enough piece to bring me through to where he wanted me to be in life. And right. I'm thankful for the broken pieces in my life. Tonight's message is making it on broken pieces. The book, uh, the book of Acts, chapter 27, if you want to turn there, we're going to be in 27 and 28. If you've got uh, your swords with you tonight, uh, the book of Acts, chapter 27. I love the book of Acts. I love the book of Acts. Uh, uh, our, our church is namesaked after the book of Acts. We're Acts 29, right? Well, wait a minute. There's 28 chapters in our, in our Bible of the book of Acts. That's true. We're the 29th chapter. I believe that God so wants his church to be uh, mirrored like it is in the book of Acts. I, I believe that is the church. That is the foundational church. That's the original church. The church did not start in Rome. It started in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost in an upper room with 120 men gathered. And the power of God. God fell on each and every one of them. That was the birth of the modern church. Right, yes, sir. Let us read. Uh, we're going to be in verses 43, right? The very last couple verses of 27. But the centurion, willing to save Paul, kept them from their purpose and commanded that they which could swim should cast themselves first into the sea and get to land, and the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. Brother, where are you at? Acts 27. 44. Some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Continuing in chapter 28. And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. For they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. And when Paul had gathered a bundle of sticks and laid them on the fire, there came a viper out of the heat and fastened on his hand. And when the barbarians saw the venomous beast hang on his hand, they said among themselves, No doubt, this man is a murderer, whom though he had escaped the sea, yet vengeance suffereth him not to live. He then shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. Howbeit they looked when he should have swollen or fallen down dead suddenly. But after they had looked a great while and saw no harm come to him, they changed their minds and said that he was a god. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Tonight, making it on broken pieces again. Uh, you know, sometimes God will purpose storms and hardships and difficult circumstances in our lives to make his great name known among non-believers in this earth. Sometimes he will mess up our lives a little bit and put us into a place that we would rather not be so that he could get some glory and so that he could be made manifest to many folks who do not know him. It's not for our glory, but for his alone. 
The book of Acts, I love the book of Acts. I love it from the beginning of the verses of chapter 1 all the way to the end of verses uh, of chapter 28. I love it. From the power of the Holy Ghost filling the 120 men that were gathered yes. in the upper room. I love it. From the moment of Peter's uh, salvation message that he preached. And, the, and we see in uh, Acts 2 and 38 where he gave the, re, the uh, salvation experience. The real born again experience that was prophesied. And that was spoken of by Jesus in John 3 3 through 5. Uh, 3 3 through 7. And so I love that. I love the layman that was healed by Peter and John. Yes. They came up to him and said, we don't have any money. They were definitely some apostolic preachers. They said, we don't have silver and gold, have I not? It's, there's nothing in here that can help you, but I do have a name. He said, in the name of Jesus Christ of yes. Nazareth, rise up and walk. And the man began to praise and dance and praise God. And I love it. Uh, from All the way from Ananias and Sapphira, who were uh, lying, the husband and wife couple, that were uh, lying about the, the cost and the money that they got from selling a piece of land. And because they were trying to deceive the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost knows God knows right even though the folks around us may not know but God knew and he spoke to them and sure enough then they both fall down dead wow. be careful what we say be careful what we sow Oh, and then Stephen's boldness. I love in Acts 7. And I love the, the boldness of Stephen to stand against his accusers, to stand there and declare the truth of God with boldness and with confidence and with authority, knowing that he faced death, knowing that there were some stones that were going to be coming his way. And while they were stoning him, the Bible says that he looked up and he saw Jesus standing there when the heaven opened up and his hands reaching down. And so Stephen, man, if my life doesn't end, I would prefer to last until the time that he comes back. I would love to see him return in his glory. I would love to see him return in the clouds coming uh, to catch us away. But if it doesn't, Lord, let my life end with me looking up and seeing you ready to receive me. Let, let that be the last moments in my life if possible. Yes, sir. From Peter baptizing Cornelius' household and coming up to Cornelius and said, who can forbid water that these should not be baptized that were baptized with the Holy Ghost? And so we went hit Cornelius and all of his household they were baptized. And Paul and Silas, Lee mentioned it earlier in Acts 16, praying and praising God at midnight and, and did that house shake and they were free from the bonds and all of a sudden not only them but a jailer was set free as well set free from the lifestyle set free from death set free from a certain path of destruction the conversion of John's baptisms in Acts 19 John the Baptist's uh, uh, disciples rather set free from that they, they were they gave a new uh, they, uh, they, get, they got a new revelation if you will Paul said hey have you been baptized since you believe this was her but the Holy Ghost this is we don't believe that we've even heard of the Holy Ghost. And so Paul started to preach to them. And they realized, this, oh, we had this John's baptism thing. We had this John the Baptist. And that was fine for them. But we got something different now. We got a new covenant. We got a new testament. We got something else that we got to do. And so they went through the real salvation experience. And Eutychus' resurrection, one of, the, one of the great things that, that, that Paul did when he was preaching. Uh, Paul must have been a, he was type of Pentecostal type of preacher, right? Because this was from the folks that were born on the day of Pentecost, uh, that church. And so he was preaching and it was meant night and it was late and they were tired and they were probably hungry. Eutychus was there hanging in the window and the fellow fell up because he was sleeping and he fell down on the ground and died. And Paul said, uh oh, that boy, that's my fault. Paul's like, oh, I did that to him. I was, I should have, I should have probably quit. I know. I saw the look in their eyes and I know the look, but man, boy, I'm hungry. I hope he quits soon. Man, I want to get home and watch that football game. And so, so Eutychus is there and he's like, oh man, Paul, come on. And he's like, oh, Paul, come on. And Paul's like, yeah, that was my fault. So Paul went out there and jumped on him and laid on him and prayed and you Eutychus was raised back to life. And of course, Saul's conversion and his renaming in Acts 9. And so the book of Acts, I love it, is so rich with so many wonderful stories and so many wonderful works of God. And so we find that in here, uh, in, in Acts 27, 28, by this time in our text, Paul's life was, was that of bondage. That was of, of captivity. He was a captive. He was arrested. He was being taken from place to place. trying to, And they were trying to find a way to destroy him and get rid of him. Uh, he was in shackles at this time. He appears before King Agrippa in chapter 26, witnesses to him, and almost persuades him to be a Christian. Almost. almost. Agrippa was a very knowledgeable man, very knew the ways of the Jews very well. And he says, almost, thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Preached a whole message on that. Almost. almost. Mm. But it wasn't to be for Agrippa. It wasn't to be. And Paul and, and it says, I don't like this, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning hath made you mad. 
You're nuts. You're crazy. You've learned too much. All this Jesus stuff, Paul, you need to get rid of it. Everybody's going to look as if you were mad. And he says, uh, I am, but he said, I am not mad. Most noble Festus. I uh, still give an honor to him, even though he's a joker. He says, I, I, I am, I'm not mad. For the words I speak are truth. And I'm speaking out of soberness. soberness. He said, this thing wasn't done in a corner. Ooh, it wasn't hidden. Done. We're not talking about something that we did in mama's basement. And that we're now just trying to parade out here on scene. This was done worldwide. Everybody knew. The word was broadcast throughout the region and throughout the area that he was risen from a dead. And so Agrippa still, eh, almost, he almost got me. Then it was determined that they should go to Italy. They, were, they said, all right, we're going to send you to Rome. We're going to send you to Caesar. Uh, Paul wanted to speak to Caesar. He knew he couldn't go back to Jerusalem because the Jews wanted him dead. And so if he had went back to Jerusalem, it would have been a death sentence. I mean, he was on a death sentence anyway. He didn't want to die at his own hands, brethren's hand. So they go to, to Italy. And then this journey was undertaken at the end of the sailing season. So they ran into difficulty. There was tremendous turmoil and a tremendous... Uh, uh, turmoil on the seas and the waves were huge and, and it was a winter kind of time and the sailing was difficult and so they faced contrary winds scarce winds they they were exposed to the elements they had all kinds of problems sometimes god will take us on those journeys in our lives where we're going to a destination that may not be that pleasurable but we say, boy well at least maybe the journey will be all right right at least the journey should be easy even though i'm going to face some hard stuff in the future at least let my journey be easy but sometimes the journey is not easy right sometimes god wants glory out of the journey more than he wants glory out of the destination and so sometimes the journey is going to be a little bit more difficult than what the destination is going to be sometimes it's not about the destination it's about the journey and we find uh, in chapter 27, verse 10, And he said unto them, Sirs, I perceive that this voyage will be hurt, and much damage, not only the landing of the ship, but also our lives. Hey, we're going to have some rough stuff. We're going to face some difficult times. He's telling his jailers and the folks that were on the ship with him. He said, this is going to be a kind of a difficult time for us. Nevertheless, the centurion believed the master and the owner of the ship more than those things that which were spoken of by Paul. They're not always going to believe us, right? Sometimes we do know. Sometimes God will reveal things to his people. And sometimes folks that don't have a relationship with God yet, and they don't really trust what you're saying, they may not believe you. But the centurion believed the quartermaster, the master of the ship, more than he believed Paul. But Paul prophesied. He said, hey, something's, happened. something's going to happen to us on this journey. I hope you're ready for it. And so we find them still, uh, they found a soft wind, and they thought that it would push them to their destination. But the seasonal, and it's called a Euroclidon, I believe that's the word for it, that's what it says in the Bible, Euroclidon there in verse 14. It's kind of a nor'easter, and it blew the ship away from, the, from Phoenix and out into open sea. And so now, they had a destination, and all of a sudden, something came along and knocked them off course. Sometimes in our lives... God, something will happen in our lives. A wind will come out of nowhere. A storm will rise up out of right. nowhere. Somewhere, something that we weren't even expecting. And it knocks us off course a little bit. And it sends us away from a refuge that we were thought we were coming to. And out into an open sea where all kinds of problems and turmoil can happen. That's right. Verse uh, 21 through 26 and, and 27. This has been after a long absence. Paul stood in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. You, you should have listened to the man of God. You should have listened to me when I told you that this place is, that this ship is not going to make it and we're going to have all kinds of problems. For there stood by me this night an angel of the Lord whose I am and on whom I serve said, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and though God hath given thee all, given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me, how be it we must be cast upon a certain island. So he says, there's surely destruction coming, but be comforted because there's a prophecy over my life. There's a prophecy that God has given me. We're going to make it through this storm. There's a certain island that we've got to be washed up on. There's some folks there that need a little bit of a manifestation of God. They need a word. They need a word. They need a word. And so we must needs go through this storm. And we must needs go to that island. And so don't worry when the ship starts to break and the pieces start to fall apart. And you're left clinging to broken pieces of the ship. 
Don't worry, God's still behind it. He's in the storm with you. Don't worry. He created the storm to bring you to a place of destiny. And so these storms in life are necessary and are for our good. Even if they don't feel like it at the time. Because they don't. No. The shipmen were about to flee the ship, it says, and when they had let down the boat into the sea in color as though they had would have cast anchors in the foreship, Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, except these abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. Many times in life, right, we, we try to bail out. They were trying to bail out. They were getting the rowboats and all the other little sa- the salvation boats, if you will. They were trying to jump in them and get them out. Trying to, well, let's get out of this. This ship is going to sink. Let's jump onto someone else's ship. Let's jump onto this one. But God says, but, but Paul said that unless they stay in the ship, they will not be saved. And so sometimes in the storms and the rides of life, right, when them waters rise up as Noah, Noah had to stay in the ark, right? He had to right. stay in the ark. If he'd have left the ark, he would have drowned like everybody else in the world. And so sometimes when the storms rise and the waters rise in our lives and the waves are beating up against our boat, don't jump out. Don't jump ship. Hold on to that anchor. Hold on to that ship and know that he is in the boat with you. For if we let go, if we jump ship on God in the midst of a storm, he says there will be no salvation for you. There's there's no hope apart from him. So I'd rather be with God in the storm than jump onto something else and without him and think I'm going to make it on my own. I need him on my ship in the storm. That's right. That's powerful. Preach it, brother. Verses 40 says, when they had taken up anchors, they committed themselves unto the sea. They said, all right, we're going to go. We're going to go. We're, we're not jumping off. We're going, to, we're going to keep on going. We're going to ride this thing out. Falling into a place where two seas met, they ran the ship around, and the fore part struck fast and remained unmovable. But the hinder part was broken in the violence of the wave. So the ship is starting to break apart now. That which they were hoping on to survive the storm, that thing that they were hoping on to ride it out, that thing that they were counting on to make it through the storm started to fall apart. What happens? What do you do? What do you do when everything around you starts falling apart? What do you do when everything that you were counting on and believing to make it through this starts to fall apart? Do you do you give up? Do you throw in the towel? Do you wave the white flag or do you say, no, I'm just going to hold on to Jesus as long as I have to, no matter the winds, no matter the rain, no matter the cold, no matter the waves, no matter the storm, no matter the tempest, though the seas roar, I'm going to hold on to him. And it says some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship. And so it came to pass that they all escaped unto Melita. Now Melita is a small island. It's located just south of Sicily, which is just south of Italy. Or Italy. So there, this is on the way. But sometimes God, right, we like, I, I'm a man of order. I'm a man of organization. I am a man of, let's get from point A to point B. I, I don't like detours. I don't like to get lost. I don't like to go on the back roads. I like to stay on the highways, right, and just get there easily, get there quick, try to save a little bit on gas, and just get there an easy way, right? But sometimes God has a plan A, a comma B, or a, uh, maybe it's from point one to two. Sometimes God has a point one, point two, right? Sometimes it, there, there's stops. There, there's little moments and brief hiccups, if you will, on your journey, on your walk, that, that lead you to places that are uncomfortable, that weren't planned, that you didn't have a desire to go to, that you didn't really want. Boy, I, I know, and I'm sure as he's holding on to those pieces, you can imagine these men grappling, grappling on, on these broken pieces of the ship with a death grip, knowing if they let go of the broken piece that they're yes. hanging on to. Just a little piece of something, but if, if they let go of that, then they'll be lost to sea and they will surely drown. So sometimes we've got to get a death grip on a little bit of faith that we're holding on to. Sometimes we're not going to make it on a fully uh, functioning, fully uh, going, like almost like a, full, like a train going down the tracks, right? A full locomotive. Sometimes we're not going to make it through on the big pieces of things. Sometimes it's the broken pieces. Mm. The broken pieces. And you can imagine, as these men, they're they're facing the storm, they're facing the waves, and every time as they're grappling upon that broken piece of board, and the wave would hit them, every time Paul felt the waves hit him, he probably thought, man, this is it, I'm going down. But no, wait, 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 God, God told me that I would make it, he he told me that I would go up before a a Caesar, so he has this prophecy over my life, and so I know I'm going to make it through. But other men, the other men that were there were probably thinking, oh man, this is it. Hopeless. 
This is it. That wave. Oh, I feel. I feel that water, the salt water coming down upon me. The Mediterranean Sea was encompassing them, and they were grabbing and, and holding on with a death grip. Just, just believe in God. Believe in something. Right? He's going to get them through. And God, without a rudder, without a stern, without a sail, rode them in and drove them into that island on that on that sea, on that uh, beach, on that washed up beach there. And so God, sometimes you don't need to worry about you driving the boat. Sometimes you don't have to worry about you steering the wheel. But just let God direct your path and just hold on. And just hold on because he doesn't need our input. He doesn't need our help. He doesn't need our guidance. And he certainly doesn't need our GPS to get us to where he needs us to be. Just hold on to the broken pieces and allow him to pilot you to safety and refuge. That's beautiful, brother. Preach it. Just hold on. Help me. And they found these barbarous people. I don't know what kind of folks they were. They were barbarous, it says. Use your imagination. But these barbarous people showed them no little kindness. They showed them great kindness and great mercy and, and great compassion. And instead of looking at those people, you can imagine as they laid there on that beach, cold and wet and exhausted and tired. And unwilling and unable to even move and get up as the waves rushed up on them still and probably maybe even washed over them from time to time and they would just take a breath between the waves and they're they're exhausted and tired, worn out and weary from that storm. And they see, and Paul especially sees them not pointing fingers, not laughing at them, not just looking at them and like, boy, maybe someone should help them. Like so many, uh, so many people nowadays do just say boy somebody should do something about that instead of instead of doing something about it right themselves and well, maybe someone should take care of that person someone should help them out these barbarous people these godless heathens if you will these these pagans these folks that do not love god do not know god but a fire started gathering sticks started doing say hey we got to help them folks uh, something happened to them i don't know what it was they wrecked obviously we got to get them a fire and so paul sees them start gathering sticks and start bundling uh, sticks together, building a fire to bring them heat. And Paul, not laying on the mercy of others, not willing to just sit back and say, all right, I'm going to let them take care of me for a little bit. I just got through this storm, and, and it's my time for relaxing. It's my time for uh, just kicking back. I'm going to let them do it for me. Instead of that, Paul, who was a tremendous survivor, a tremendous survival instinct within Paul. A, a desire to keep going on and not allowing the circumstances and the environments of life to push him down and make him quit. Paul, the Bible says, started gathering sticks. He said, I'm going to help you help me. I'm, go I'm not going to lay back here and expect, even though I see you're helping me. And sometimes I get so sick. of how, Sometimes I get so sick of building fires for folks that won't gather wood. That won't gather sticks. Wow. I, I get sick of people that, that count on you to do everything for them and aren't willing. Man, I'll pray you through. I'll, I'll, I'll teach with you. I'll sit with you. I'll read with you. I'll help you. But i got to see you doing something on your own too. Don't just expect me to build this fire. you got to keep this fire going after I leave. you got to keep adding wood to the fire even after I depart. And so Paul, with a great survival instinct inside of him, starts gathering sticks. He says, I'm weary, I'm tired, I'm cold, I'm wet. Here comes this rain, this cold water, this cold air. Sometimes he's like, man, I just survived this pl the shipwreck, right? I just survived that storm. But sometimes in life, it's one thing and then another. Sometimes the storms don't stop. And before we can really uh, enjoy the celebration of making it through that storm, here comes another one. And sometimes when we get through the storm, we expect a tipper, ticker tape parade and sunshine and butterflies and a nice little meadow and a nice warm meal, right? But sometimes we're so worn out from the previous storm that we don't have a chance to enjoy and even understand that we really made it because we're so wore down. We're so beaten down. We're so exhausted from the previous storm that it doesn't feel like victory anymore. Right. I don't feel like I made it because I'm still so worn down and I'm exhausted in there and I'm tired and victory doesn't feel like it should feel like this. Man, I expect victory, I expect dancing and celebration and parties and high fives, but sometimes I'm too tired to get out of the bed to go to the party.
sometimes I'm so worn out by the strength and the energy that I exhausted trying to get through this one thing that I don't have a, the ability to enjoy it. But sometimes we need to get together with some friends. And, and sometimes we will look back on things years after the battle, years after the struggle, years after the fight and the storm and say, whoa, hey, I made it. I made it through that. It, it didn't feel like I made it back then, but, but I'm looking back on it now and I made it. I mean, sometimes we need to get together and throw a celebration, throw a party for, for making it through these hard times in life and, and really celebrate the great victories that God has brought us through. That's powerful. Yeah. Paul had a strong survival instinct. He, he said, I'm going to help you help me. And so as he's helping him help him, he starts gathering sticks, right? And this is a thing, right? You can't give up. You can't throw in the white towel because I assure you, especially um, even later on as you walk with God, not necessarily in the infancy stage of, of being a Christian, but, but as you start to live this thing, as, as you start to get close to God, sometimes it's going to seem like one thing after another, after another, after another. And, man, I just dealt with that. And here comes this something else. And it just keeps piling on, but you can't give up. And so Paul's gathering sticks, and all of a sudden, out of the sticks, a viper comes and it fastens to his hand. Man, I just dealt with a storm. I just got through a shipwreck. I, I clung on to something for dear life. And I made it on there. And I washed up. And I'm cold and I'm wet. And I'm tired and exhausted. I see these folks starting to gather some sticks for a fire. And so I'm saying, oh, man, I'm going to help them and help the other guys. Even though I'm a prisoner, I'm going to still help the ones that were imprisoning me. I'm going to build a fire for them, too. Because it's not just about me. I'm going to build a fire for my enemies, too. And the ones that are coming against me. I'm going to help them as well. I'm going to pray for them as well. And so... Even though I was ostracized, even though I had all kinds of enemies talking all kinds of things about me, I'm still going to help them. And in the midst of helping them, here comes something else, God. Why are you doing this to me? Why is it one thing after another, after another, after another? And so this viper comes out of these wood, out of these sticks, and fastens to his hand. Yes. Yes. And the barbarous people... Sometimes folks will call out something and say something at the worst time. You know, sometimes, well, like, I know I'm dealing with this thing. I, re I recognize this viper on my hand. I realize I got this issue I got to deal with. I really don't need your input. I really don't need you reminding me about the viper on my hand. I see it. I feel it. It's with me right now. I'm aware of it. And so the barbarous people, they say, oh, oh, my. He's dead. Hmm. They said, no doubt. They started to, to speak and reason among themselves. And Paul, I'm sure, is seeing them all. Oh, they're, they're talking about me. With this <laughs> He's got this viper on his hand, and he sees them talking about him. And he says, no doubt, this man is a murderer. Who, who even though he's escaped the sea, vengeance suffereth him not to live. And if you read and you find out and study about the people on Melita or Malta, it's both of those uh, pronunciate or both of those names uh, here in the in the Bible I got, it says that the people, if you study it out, the people of Malta actually had and worshipped the Greek goddess of uh, justice, Greek goddess of justice. So, so they're thinking that their god, their their little goddess that they believed in, is is hey, this man is a murderer. He escaped the sea. She tried to get him out there in the sea. She didn't get him. He escaped the sea somehow. He escaped her wrath. Well, now this viper's on his hand. She's gonna kill him. She, she's just getting. He's just getting his just deserves, right? He's he's just getting what he deserved. He's he he it must be karma. It must be a karma type thing. And so they worship this god. The Greek god is called Justice. And and so now they think ah. She's got him now. He's not going to escape this. But, but he shook it off, right? He shook it off, fell in the fire, fell no harm. And they said, oh, this man's a god. Because he's better than, he's greater than the one. Man, she's tried to get him twice. She's tried to get him twice and she didn't get, him done, get it done. So he, he must be a god. But, but that, that is neither here nor there. The most important thing we need to understand from this little, little exchange, if you will, is sometimes folks will call out something in your life that you were. Have we forgotten that Paul was a murderer? That Paul was a murderer. And that he did deserve a murderer's judgment. He did deserve a murderer's death. That's so deep. See, he was Saul that we remember that, that was there consenting under the stoning of Stephen. He was there holding the coats as I, uh, Stephen, I felt I was talking about. Paul was there. 
He was there when he was stoned. He was there when he was being bashed in with rocks and when he bled out and a part of his face, I'm sure, was destroyed and all parts of his head were exposed. His brain, I know it's a graphic, but this is what happened. His brain was probably exposed and all these horrible things. And Paul was going around trying to get papers, trying to arrest people that were preaching the name of Jesus, that were baptizing folks in Jesus' name, that were laying hands on folks and seeing them filled with the Holy Ghost. Right, yes. Paul, who was Saul, was there consenting to all of this stuff. He was actually on the road to Damascus when Jesus blinded him. He was on his way to arrest some more of those Jesus freaks. And, and so he was on his way. And so this man was a murderer. And they were right. They called something out in Paul that was so true. And, and it probably dug at him a little bit. It probably wounded him a little bit. It reminded him of where he came from. It reminded him of what his identity used to be. Mm. What do you do when people touch on something that you used to be? What happens when those folks that see your conversion, see a difference in your life, see that you're trying to do something good and that you're really trying to walk with the Lord. What, what do you do when you hear those voices? Because each and every one of us have faced them or each and every of us, every one of us will face those voices I remember you when. Wait a minute, you're the same guy that used to do this with me. <laughs> hey, uh, remember that night? Hey, you ain't so saved. What would you think you're going to be all high and mighty, all holy and, and, and righteous now? When, when you used to live that kind of life, when you used to be that kind of person, when you used to do those kinds of things, almost like the barbarous people are still existent today, and those voices are echoing all the way from back then, about, what, 80, 65, 85 AD, all the way to 2014, those voices still exist. They echo still in the chambers of our, of our eardrums, and the chambers of our minds saying you don't deserve this you you are just going to get the desert whatever struggle you're going through whatever hardship and storm you deserve this because of what you used to do because of who you used to be it's just it's that same kind of voice it's that same lie from the garden that it's the same lying serpent that, that began from there and it's so what we got to do is remember who our identity is in that's I, my identity is not in what I used right. to do because what I used to do, I don't want to be remembered for that anymore. I don't, I don't want to be known for that anymore. I, I don't want that to be the identity that I walk with, that I live with, that I breathe with because right. i got to look at this fella every day in the mirror and I want to see what God sees. I want to see a reflection on the image of God. I want to know that I am made after His image, after His likeness, after His kind. I know that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I know that I am a new creature that I am born again that that stuff was washed away in the water and so as Paul survived the storm and he survived the snake and these voices are coming to him saying hey he's a murderer you were a murderer you deserve to die you're getting what you deserve oh what's he do he shakes it off he shakes it off. He shakes those voices off. He shakes those accusations off. He shakes those lies off. Because Paul was not Saul anymore. Paul was not Saul anymore. He was a new creature. He was a new creation. He walked in newness of life because he had a new identity. And that new identity was an identity in Christ. Not in an identity of the things he used to do and his hang-ups and his hook-ups, but he was an identity in God. An identity that was given to him on the day that he was born again. No longer walking after the filth of the flesh, but after the Spirit. No longer walking after the lusts and the cravings of this life, but after the will and the desire of God for my life. And he was there for a purpose. Do not allow past failures to define you. Many times the enemy, much like Carrie said last week, right? Sometimes these things are so traumatic and so awful in our lives. There's things that have happened in my life that, that I would rather be dead than to have done them, than to have, than, than to have been there and done that, if you will. I, I would rather have been dead than to that, for those things to have happened, but, but happened nonetheless, they did. And, and so I can't go back and erase them, but, but I can repent from them and find an identity in Christ that says, I am not man, that man anymore. I am not that person anymore. And so even though I have some horrific things in my past, I will not allow them to define me. I'm moving on. I'm not going to listen to the whispers of the enemy and the voices and the chaotic voices of the enemy reminded me of who I was. Right. Preach it, brother. 
The Bible says in Psalm 1, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. No, but his delight is in the light, but in the law of the Lord does he meditate day and night. And so, blessed is the man that listens not to the counsel of the ungodly. Paul was faced with some ungodly counsel on the island of Melita, wasn't he? That the, the counsel that he was getting wasn't godly because it wasn't bringing out his true identity. They were trying to remind him of his past. Blessed is the man that will not find his identity in what he used to be. Blessed is the man that looks in the mirror and sees the man of God. He says he shook off the beast into the fire and felt no harm. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that when things try to fasten themselves to me, that's power. When things try to grasp at my heart and things try to attach themselves to me, that's so powerful. I'm glad I know a God Jeez. that has a fire. That if, if it's something that I know is meant for my destruction, or if it's something that I may not know is meant for my destruction, all I gotta do is do what Paul did. I just got to put it in some fire. And so if I put these things in fire, I'm going to know. If they can resist the fire, then it's of God. For my God is a consuming fire. But if it falls off and it runs away because of the fire, then this thing wasn't meant for me to begin with. And this thing that's in my life wasn't meant to stay. And this thing that was in my life is not meant to be there. And so sometimes I got to put some friends to the fire. Sometimes I gotta put some family members into the fire. Sometimes I gotta put my spouse, even though my wife's hot for God, I'm burning for God, I'm thankful for that. But sometimes if we really want to know if this person is meant for us, if we really want to know if they're meant to go walk side by side with us, then we need to get into a place of fire and see if they can endure, to see if they can last, to see if they will stay with us, to see if they will stick with us. Because anything that repels from the fire of God is not meant to stick with us. And so what we got to do is if there's something in our life that's attached itself to us, Let's see here if it can endure some prayer. Let's see if this thing will still stick around after I burn in prayer. And I'm not talking about a sleepy time, five minute prayer that you fall asleep halfway through. <laughs> Done that. Right, everyone, right? <laughs> Man, one of the easiest ways for me to fall asleep is to pray. I just start thinking about <laughs> I'll play a lot of space. Sometimes I'll wake up, honestly, hours later, and I'll just continue as I was, and then I'm out again. But I'm thankful that God does that, but, but honestly. But sometimes, when we really feel something pulling at us, something tugging at us, something that is really trying to perhaps bring some destruction in my life, I don't have time to go to sleep. I don't have time to turn on the TV. I don't have time to turn on the internet. I've got to get into a place of prayer and know if this thing is meant for good or if this thing is meant for evil because if it's meant for evil it will not withstand the fire oh first kings 18 right when elijah built the altar consumed it with water it was completely completely saturated with water so this thing wasn't going to be ignited by a man-made flame preach it it wasn't going to be lit up by a man-made flame and while the prophets of baal took their little altar and cut themselves and made themselves bleed and, and, and profusely bleed. It wasn't right. It wasn't a paper cut. Profusely bleed all over their altar as they prayed unto Baal. <laughs> With empty voices to an empty God, to an empty idea. Elijah and <laughs> in the evening time prayed. And God consumed that altar sacrifice, that altar with fire. So God will answer by fire. And so if you really want to know if these things are meant to stick around in your life, pray. Get into a place of prayer. Get into a place of fasting. Get into a place of worship and burn for the things of God. Burn in a place of prayer. Because in the furnace of your prayer closet, something falls off, and then it wasn't meant to be in your life. If, if you're in a place of prayer and you're burning and this stuff doesn't last, then it wasn't meant to be. We must realize that this life is not for our comfort and our ease. 
It is to bring Him glory. And sometimes in our lives, this may come through suffering. And it may come through uncomfortable circumstances. Not everything that gives God glory is beautiful. Not everything that gives God glory is easy and acceptable for us. Ask Lazarus how great, how fun it is to give God glory. Ask Lazarus as he laid there dead four stinking days right in that, in that, in that tomb. And that whole, you can imagine the smell when Jesus rolled that stone away. Oh my. But ask Lazarus how, how much it costs to bring God glory. And so if we really want to glorify God, if we really want to glorify the God of heaven and earth, the creator, the one that formed me as the potter, he formed me as a little piece of clay to come down here and live this life and bring him glory. And I spent too many years bringing him, not bringing him glory, that I need to really just surrender the rest of my life and say, Lord, whatever I got, whatever days I have left, let me bring you glory in those days. And sometimes it's not going to be Terry with a microphone. Sometimes it's not going to be Terry laying hands on someone that brings God glory. Sometimes it's not going to be Terry singing and praising God that's going to bring God glory. Sometimes it's going to be Terry suffering through a storm. Sometimes it's going to be Terry suffering with a viper on his hand. Sometimes it's going to be God Terry with people speaking all kinds of unkind things about him that is really going to bring God glory. And friends, we must be uh, the Bible, I love it in uh, 2 Corinthians, I believe it is. It says that we are pressed, but not crushed. crushed right. Persecuted, but not abandoned. Not abandoned. Struck down, not destroyed. but not destroyed. <laughs> I'm glad that that's not an end. It's, it's just to bring Him glory. And Job said, though He slay me. Yet shall I trust Him. And, and Paul, no doubt, still trusted Jesus no matter how hard the storms were, no matter how difficult the circumstance was, no matter how the hardship was. He still trusted Him. So broken pieces. broken pieces. Don't be mad about the broken pieces in your life. He used them to bring you where you are now. Brought you in on a little piece of faith. It was... Just a little piece of faith that you were holding on to for all those years. But some kind of way, He brought you through on that little piece of faith. He, he brought you through on that little piece of relationship, on a little piece of marriage, on a little piece of job, on a little piece of something. But you, you held on to it and you clung to it with a death grip. Knowing that if you let go of that little piece, all would be lost. But He's the God of the broken pieces. And don't grumble when, the, when he shatters the boat that you were on. Because you never know. Mm. You never know who will be touched by that broken ship. You never know the lives that could change because you made it through the storm. You never know what God can do on a broken ship. And as we read further on, Right? It was prophesied that Paul must go to this island. And he said, now guys, we're going to crash on this island. There's a purpose behind it. There's a purpose behind the storm. There's a purpose right. behind our suffering. Right. God's not mean, right? God's not just trying to destroy you. God's not trying to, to just have his way with you and have fun with you and think, boy, how much can this boy endure? How much can this guy take? Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to toy around with him, right? He's not up there as a puppet master just pulling the strings trying to bring hardship in our life. But everything has a reason. Everything has a purpose. And even things that are meant for bad by man will be turned around for good by God. Right. And so we find Paul it says in verse 8 of 28, And it came to pass that the father of Publius lay sick of a fever and of a bloody flux, to whom Paul entered in and prayed and laid his hands on him and healed him. So when this was done, others also, which had diseases in the island, came and were healed. There was a great reason Paul had to go to Melitone. Even though he was on his way to Rome to face Caesar... Even though he was already facing a major hardship and he would last two years in that jail and he would base, and then he would be killed, he would be martyred, he knew he had a death coming. He knew he had uh, a death sentence on the way. But even in the storms, knowing that he faced death beyond the storm, even in the midst of the storm, he says, you know what, I can still do something for God. 
I could still be a witness. I could still have a testimony. I could still do a mighty work for God. Yes, and so what he on. did, he said, all right, God, you brought me here. Let me do what you want me to do. And so that island that was full of barbarous people that had a Greek goddess that they worshipped called Justice, these folks that did not know God, had no relationship with God, were now exposed. To an encounter with a living God Jesus. that could change their lives forever. Jesus. Because one man endured the storm. Because Jesus. one man endured the wreckage. Because one man Jesus. hung on to the broken pieces. Jesus. And because of the broken pieces that he held on to, he was able to impact and touch the lives of people that he would have oh, never Father. otherwise known because of his testimony and because of the things that God brought through him. Because they saw a manifestation of the power of God in his life. When he shook off the venomous thing. And so when these things come into our lives and attach themselves to us, it's for a sign that when we shake this thing off, you can shake it off too. And if I had this struggle and I got free from it, guess what? There's freedom for you too. I may have been bound to some things before, but because I'm free now, you can also be free. I, I was stuck in that kind of lifestyle before, but because of the power of God, so can you be free as I am free. For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. So don't grumble. Thank you, Lord. Don't give up. Don't throw in the towel when you face life's storms and the hardships and the troubles in life that we often face. Understand and know that it is for a divine purpose. And be expected to find someone or some people that are going to be blessed and impacted by the survival story that you have. That you survived hell. That you survived the high water. That you survived every hardship that has ever come your way. And that you overcame. The Bible says that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. And so it's the word. It's not just the blood, but also by the amazing things that God has done in my life. That, my, that I survived, that I endure, and that I'm able to impact folks. So we got to realize that the storms and the broken pieces that sometimes we cling to are the very thing that God will use to bring a manifested glory into the lives of unbelievers. Yes. Yes. What a word tonight. Jesus. Just meditate upon God right now. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. The moon and stars, they went. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was falling. His body on the cross. His blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon Him. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave. The war on death was waged. The power of hell forever yes. broke. The ground began to shake. The stone was rolled away. His perfect love could not be earned. Come. Now death, where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Forever He is glorified. Forever He is lifted high. Forever He is risen. He is alive. Alive. Yes. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. One more time. The ground began to shake. The stone was rolled away. His perfect love could not be overcome. 
my death weary shores. Sing, our resurrected King has rendered you defeated forever. He is glorified forever. He is lifted high forever. He is risen. He is alive. Is alive. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You're alive. If you need prayer tonight, what a powerful word we got tonight. Such a powerful word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is about my fifth service today. I preached a message earlier. He had taught three Bible studies. Spoke here tonight, led worship in a service, and I'm still going. Well, maybe you're tired tonight, I don't know. But I don't know, I need a touch. I got touched already, but I want a better touch, amen? I want God to move in my life. This ain't fake, it's not superficial. I'm telling you that there's something deeper. The Bible says that they might seek the Lord happily, that they might find Him, though He's not far from each one of us. The Bible says the Spirit searches all things, yea, even the deep things of God. Thank you, Jesus. That they might seek Him, and they might find Him, though He's not far from each one of us. I don't want just a superficial relationship. I'm stubborn, man. I, I can tell you time and time again, I've shaken my fist at God. I've shaken my fist at God. I've fought with Him and I've lost every battle I've had with Him. I've fought against the will of God because sometimes I know that the will of God is going to take me into suffering. It's going to take me into a place where I'm bit by snakes. It's going to take me into a place and sometimes He wants us to walk willingly into those places just as He walked. For if we do not suffer with Him, we won't reign with Him. Hallelujah. But if we don't suffer with Him, we won't reign with Him. And, and there's times in my flesh I fight that. And I, I get tired of the, the bombardment from people. I get tired of the rejection and the pain and the struggle and the weariness and, and, and sick and tired of being sick and tired and sick and tired of being beat down from other people. But I'm telling you what, God's my vindicator. Help me, Lord, to obey Your will. Because sometimes the will of God takes us places that we would never meant to go and we would never go in in our own flesh. But by the Spirit, I can accomplish all things. You're looking at a man who died a physical death in 2004 and God resurrected him. You're looking at a man who went through stuff. I remember Brother Ernie, 2011, April, just come back from the most wonderful vacation in my life. Uh, Brother Ernie sits across from me and said, You're Job. I said, I'm not. I laughed. He wasn't laughing. He said, Yes, you are. And then he said, you're going to go through hell. And it's going to feel like hell. But he says, when you come out, you're coming out vindicated. Smelling like a rose. About five months later, I was jobless, homeless, and familyless. From making $60,000, $70,000 a year, God tells me to step out from a job. And I did it. And I'm not lauding myself because many times I've hit a grand slam, Brother Jamie. I walked back to the dugout with my head hanging, struck out looking. I'm telling you what, I've taken the collar at times. I've done it my way at times. But with God, He's my vindicator. And my portion and my strength in this life. But I, I struggle. Man, I, I need your prayers. Because I struggle. My will oftentimes gets in the way of the will of God. I'm my, as that Casting Crown song says, Brother Terry, I'm my own worst enemy. My problem is I won't even get on the boat because I'm afraid that the boat's going to, I know that I know where I go. It seems like the boat sinks. <laughs> so I'm afraid to get even on the dark boat, not trusting that God would get me by on the pieces of the boat if the boat does sink. <laughs> because I get tired of stuff. Yeah. I get, like Pastor Terry said it a bunch of times, I get weary. I get worn. I get tired. But you know what, Pastor Terry? Where am I going to go? I can't escape him. David says, if I go to hell, he's there. If I ascend to heaven, he's there. If I go to hell, he's there. Wherever I go, I can't escape him. Or his will or his purpose for my life. Where am I going to go? His disciples said, where are we going to go? You have the words of life. <laughs> where are we going to go? We're going to stay, stay with you. Many of the people, they walked away. They left him and he said, are you going to leave me also? 
He said, where are we going to go? Where am I going to go? I can't escape him. Even if I try, he pursues me. In his love and in his mercy, he pursues me. Maybe you're out there and you're feeling like that Philippian jailer. Man, Brother Terry had a word that matched mine. Do you know that? Isn't that freaky? I just knew the title. I didn't know. I didn't know what really you the depth of what you were speaking tonight, but it matched it almost to a T. You come out of Acts 17 a little bit, and then Acts 27. I was in Acts 16 today. You got the potatoes baked two ways, right? You got fried by Pastor Terry, and you got uh, mashed by Pastor Dixon. They're both a potato, right? You got a word. That's what you got. Something good. Something that's going to last. I'm telling you, we'll pray for you here tonight. I'm telling you. Heck, you can pray for me. Because <laughs> I need help. I'll take it. There's no shame in a man saying he needs prayer. Maybe you need the Holy Ghost. Maybe you need the Spirit of God. There's many different ways people are told they, they get the Spirit of God, but I know a Bible way. I know one. I know a Pentecostal way. They spoke in a heavenly tongue. And some folks say, well, that's crazy. The Bible says God chooses the foolish things to confound the wise. The foolish things. The Bible says in Acts 28, or Isaiah 28, I believe, verse 14, said, with a stammering lip and another tongue will I speak to this people. Yet for all this they won't hear me. This is the rest. This is the rest. Maybe you need the Holy Ghost. Maybe you need born again of water and spirit. Maybe you need baptized in the saving name of Jesus. Maybe you need that very thing that's going to remit your sins. Maybe you need that. And God gave pastors. He gave evangelists. He gave prophets. He gave teachers. Men of God. Filled with the Spirit of God. To lay hands on you. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. They shall speak with new tongues. Mark 16, 17. It's real. I promise you it's real. I remember one time I stood up. I was 19 years old. I was at a youth conference. And I stood up. And I said I was backslidden. I spent about four years in Egypt. My mom knows this. I was a knucklehead, man. I knew better. But so what? So we all went there. I mean, uh, not so what. I don't mean to say that callously. But what God, what God has willed and what God has planned was for me to go to that place. Why? Because I can have a whole bunch of people who reside, have compassion on a whole bunch of people who make poor choices, who did things, did stuff. God, I must needs go through Samaria. I must be broken. I must. I had to go to that place because I'd be self righteous. I would be. I wouldn't have compassion on people in the big heart that God has given me for people in the mistakes that people has made and love unlovely people and love people who make poor choices i gotta go to those places and i've been there i've been hurt i know the pain and i know the sting of life but i stood up in that conference at about 20 years old i'd say no i'm sorry about 21 i was 21 years old and i stood up and i said and i said in my heart god and the service was so powerful we got a message like pastor terry brought us tonight and i remember deep within my heart convicted and i was still lost i was still in egypt but i knew something got a hold of my heart and i stood up and i said in my heart i said god if this is real if the spirit of god is real and as soon as i said that it came out my mouth <laughs> Words that I couldn't understand. Words that I couldn't explain. It was another tongue. A heavenly tongue. An angel's tongue. And I knew right then and there that God is real. Because I asked in my heart. And He answered the very thought of my heart. And I know it's real. And I felt His power. And I've seen His grace. And maybe you need that. Maybe you need that. Maybe you need that. For the natural man receiveth not the things of God, but they are but foolishness unto him. For the natural man receiveth not the things of God, they are but foolishness unto him. 
Hey, we'll take repentance. We'll take baptism in Jesus' name. How hard is it to get in the water? Yet 90% of Christian America is spit in your face if I, when you tell them to get baptized in Jesus' name. Why is that? If it has to do with Jesus, could it really be that bad, people? Come on, if it has to do with Jesus, in the name of Jesus, could it really be that bad? Oh, oh come on. Could it be really that bad? Why do you got to fight the will of God? Why do you got to stubbornly right shake your fist at God and give God the middle finger and say, I'm not doing that? Oh, come on. Just get in the water. Find remission of sins. Because I did one day. And does that mean I'm going to live perfect in this life? There's a misconception. Unequivocally, I am not going to live perfect. God's going to develop my character till I drop dead on this earth. Till I take my final breath. God's going to be still changing me. I'm not perfect. If you live in this life, you're, 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 one, you're like me. If you cut me, I bleed. In about five minutes, I'm dead, Brother Jamie. If I stop breathing in about three minutes, unless you're that guy on Ripley's, in about three minutes, you're dead. And you're going to be blue and worm food. Take advantage of it tonight. Maybe you need to repent. Maybe you need to come up to the altar and confess. I do. Each and every day. My problem, you know, Pastor Terry, what my problem? My problem's forsaken. I can repent till I'm blue in my face. I can confess. I'm not ashamed of confessing. The Bible says confess and forsake. My problem's the forsake part. Pretty girl walks by. Ooh. Oh. Hey, I'm real. I just tell her I'm getting a nod up here. For real. I tell the boot campers this all the time. I'm real. What, what good is he who covers sin? The, the Bible talks about the man who covers his own sin. And I fight it. Trust me, I fight it. Because I learned stuff in Egypt that I don't like. And I spent about five years in Egypt, Brother Jamie. And I learned a whole bunch of stuff that I don't like. This is real. You may think yeah, yeah, that this is very real. And, and I go home, why did I do that? Oh, and I kick myself in the butt. And, and I pound the daylights out of myself. And I, and I tell God once again, I go right from the altar, right back to the door. And I go right back to the same stuff. And it seems like I can't escape. And I'm telling you what, there is a way of escape. God knows from the depths of our heart. He knows our heart. He knows there's a remedy and there's a way out of this. And with God, I can make a change. And today, I said, I'm giving this to you, God. My sin isn't your sin. My, oh, did somebody hear me? My sin's not your sin. Maybe some of you out there gossip. Maybe some of you out get meddle in people's business. Well, I don't really do a lot of that. I try to keep to myself. And, but my sin isn't your sin. And we all have fallen short of the glory of God. Yes. Each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. Oh, I feel like the Spirit of the Lord is speaking tonight. And I feel like it's reaching people, and me included. Because I don't stand up here all holier than thou. I don't stand up here and say, claim myself to be something I'm not. And one day, my, my precious daughter, I just love her so much. She speaks best. I have the best daughter in the world. I tell her that all the time. I don't want her to go the path I went. She's so wonderful. One day she said, Dad, don't beat yourself up. You're not that bad. And I felt God speaking to my spirit. And I didn't feel alone anymore. In spite of my frailty and my weaknesses, I didn't feel alone no more. That God's with me every step of the way in spite of my weaknesses. And I need help. I've been faithful in my life 17 years on my marriage under some of the worst possible circumstances. But I'm not infallible. And none of us are perfect. And I think bad thoughts just like you. And I get things sown in my heart just like you. And I have to fight just like you. 
and it ain't easy. And this life wears at you. It wears. It wears. I'm not Superman. And neither are you. And neither are you. If you need help tonight, come on up. Don't be ashamed. Please. Please. Don't be ashamed. We're all in this together. We're all in this together. All of us. making an impassioned plea tonight. Hallelujah. Forgive us, God. All of us. We've all messed up. All of us. We're all human, Lord. Frail. 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 I need you, Lord. I need you, Jesus. Mom, oh, will you come up and pray for Brother Jamie with us? Sister Hannah, will you come up and pray? Thank you, Jesus. and we're not exempt from this life, Lord. Not a bit. We know how hard it is. We do. We know how hard it is, Lord. Jesus, Jesus, you touch this man. God, by the power of the Holy Ghost, you fill him, Lord, as he yields himself to you, oh God, I pray. Jesus, 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 Jesus. I thank you for this young man, Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Protect him and champagne, Lord. God, keep them united. Keep them together. Keep them together. God, I pray. God, I pray right now, Lord. The battle's not. So God, I pray. You strengthen them, O oh God, give them courage, O oh God, to, to walk this walk, to live this life, O oh God. Courage, boldness, boldness, O oh God. Let them seek the deep things of God, O oh God, we pray. The deep things of God, not by might and not by power, but by your spirit, O oh God, we pray. We can't make it alone, Lord God. The battle's strong against the men of God. Men and leaders, O oh God, the battle's strong, Lord, we pray. That he would overcome all things, even as you overcame. God, we pray. We pray. We pray. None of us are exempt, Lord. We admit our frailty, O oh God. Each and every man in this place admits his frailty, O oh God. And his yearning and a need for a Savior. In the name of Jesus, I pray. I pray, call this man to what you would have him to do, O oh God. Make him value such as I have, give I unto him, O oh God. A bold voice, a voice of reason amongst the Gentiles, Lord God. A voice of reason. A voice of passion, O oh God. A voice of understanding, Lord God, in a fallen generation, in a butt backward generation, O oh God, I pray. A voice of reason. Let him reason with mankind and persuade man. And persuade man. 
with boldness and confidence, O oh God. That'll be a point of manifestation. We believe you're already starting to use them, O oh God. Whatever you want to reveal to him doctrinally, whatever, let him walk in deep truth, O oh God. Deep truth in the deep things of God, knowing that you're real. Lord, we're real. I impart knowledge by the power of the name of Jesus through the laying on of hands. I pray, be filled with your spirit, Lord. I pray in abundance, in abundance in Jesus' name, by the power of the Holy Ghost, we pray. By the authority of Almighty God, protection and angel protection about him, oh God. And coming in and going out, keep his steps sure, oh God. Keep his steps sure. God, never let him fall astray, oh God. I'll protect them, oh God. To not quit. To not quit. To always seek you, oh God. In this world we'll have trouble, but take heart. Take heart. Take heart. Jesus, we pray. Jesus, my son, I say unto thee, I have called you. I have chosen you. I have known you. Speak my word with confidence. Speak it with boldness. Look to me for guidance in all that you do. Search my word. See whether these things be so. Search my word, I say unto you, whether these things be so. And I shall keep my hand upon you. And I shall direct you. And I will guide you. And you will know me in a deeper way as you hold fast. Know that enticements await. Know that allurement awaits, but I am in this. I say unto thee, look to me, and I will elevate you and raise you up and teach you obedience, and you'll know me in a deeper way, says the Lord. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Walk not in thine own understanding, I say unto thee. Lean not into thine own understanding, into thine own wisdom, but be directed. By my word and by my spirit, I say unto thee, seek me. Seek me, and you will find me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for this young man. God, move in his life. I impart boldness, confidence. In you, Lord, encourage him, strengthen him. We, we, we feel a move tonight. We feel a move. Let him be a soul winner. The highest level is a soul winner. Bring, let him bring people in and, and taste of the living waters, Lord. We pray. We pray, Lord. Whatever you would have him to do, to do, oh God, I pray. Open doors. Give him a platform, oh God. There's something here, Lord. We see it. We see it. There's something here. We see it, Lord. We see it. May you be glorified in that. In all things. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Our Savior, Jesus, who was hung up for our hang-ups. Hung up for our hang-up. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man. Something special tonight, brother. Thank you. Give you a look. You're called. Yeah. Do you need prayer? I'll take prayer. I'll always take prayer. Jerry, yeah. I just want to pray for you. Yeah, Confidence. Yeah. Don't give it away. Yes. Yeah. Jesus. Father, yeah. we thank you for tonight, God. I, pray. I thank you for the continued giving strength. Lord, I thank you for the many miracles yes. and wondrous yes. works that you've done through his life. Lord, I thank you for bringing him through so many pushing, horrific, hellish circumstances and, and difficult yes, circumstances. Lord, I thank home. you for planting the faithfulness in him. That he didn't You're turn so from you, even when many others so would. Oftentimes, when others turned against him, you Lord, you, name, Lord, you never did. Bold. Lord, I thank you for that. Lord, I thank you for giving him strength and endurance to withstand thank the, you for him, the storms in life, to withstand the hardships in life, and, and to so endure you, Lord, the processes Jesus, that oftentimes we've got to go through. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. But Lord, you strengthened him, you fortified him, you gave him so many things out of those hard circumstances, Lord, the wisdom, the knowledge, the compassion, the love, the mercy that has come out of these six circumstances and situations in his life, Lord, that have equipped him and strengthened him and made him an even stronger soldier for your kingdom, Lord. Lord, I thank you for his leadership skills, his love, his compassion, his forgiveness, and his mercy and the example that he sets for his family and for us. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Lord, I thank you. That, and then I, I pray, oh God, that, that you would continue to bless his life, continue to bless his work. And Lord, help him uh, subdue and, and, and bring these things that, that often sometimes try to bring him down, Lord, I pray. 
that you would subdue them. And the sins that so easily beset each and every one of us, Lord, I pray that these things, that he would have a strength over them and a power over them, Lord, and that he wouldn't succumb uh, to these thoughts, that he wouldn't succumb uh, to these voices uh, so easily, oh God, that he would heal them, and that he would condemn these voices that come against them, that he would silence these voices that come against them. Anything that comes against them. God, I pray, silence the evil Lord, the voices of the enemy, oh God, that try to, that, that try to remind them of his failures, Remind him of his uh, Jesus, Jesus. stumblings, oh God. Lord, that he would hear the voice of God, that he would hear the voice, voice of truth in everything that he does, that he would hear the voice of God speaking into his life, reminding them of who he is, reminding them of who he is in you, oh God. Lord, let him forsake the sins that he's committed, oh God. Let him not, be, uh, let him not hang on to the things that that he needs to be letting go of, yes, oh God, but, but not Jesus, take on the burdens that, that, that you are Jesus, that you said that you will take, oh God. I pray that he wouldn't hold on to these things any longer, that he would let go. Jesus, let Jesus. go, oh God, and let you take care of them. Let you handle them. Let you have them. Yes. Lord, that no you would fear, feel no a freedom fear. and a weight lifted off of him, Jesus. oh God, a weight of pressure, a weight of stress, yes. Thank you, a weight of overwhelming Hallelujah. responsibility, oh God. No fear, that Lord, I pray. He would walk I pray. in lightness Jesus, with you, oh God, that he would walk with Jesus, a lightness in you. And that he wouldn't feel burdened, wouldn't feel heavy, wouldn't feel overloaded, but that he would know that he has every, all power and all ability to do the things that you've called him to do because you've called him to do it. Take the weights off of him. Take the stress load off of God and give him wisdom and understanding and how to deal and how to cope with everything he's got to deal with. Or the burden for, that he feels for all the folks in the boot camp that come to him with problems and circumstances and situations and hardships and hurts and pains. Lord, give him wisdom to speak to them in their, in their situation. And Lord, that he wouldn't be overwhelmed by the great spirit, by the powerful spirits that are there. Uh, the enemy, the working of the enemy, oh God. We rebuke the power of, of the enemy that is there. Lord, we take a court. Let it and let him walk in a power that subdues that kind of wickedness, that subdues Jesus. the evil there, that subdues uh, the, the, the powers of darkness there, oh God. But let your spirit prevail in his life, prevail in his home life, prevail in his house and his family. Jesus. Let it prevail in the boot camp, let it prevail here, Lord. Let, let your spirit prevail in his life. And Lord, we thank you for the great example that he is, the great witness that he is, the great testimonies that he has. Lord, I thank you for him being the most important person that's been in my life and for the impact that he's had in my life and for not leaving me in, to not leaving me in the ditches that I should have been laid in but Lord he pulled me out and I thank you for that and for not forsaking me for, for, for doing such a horrible thing Lord I think there's no condemnation I thank you Lord thank you. for his friendship and his love Jesus. and his, his mercy in my life Lord and I thank you for the great example that he is and Lord may May his life be a, a, a shining light to this world of an overcomer and a conqueror and a man that stands strong and firm on the integrity of your word and the integrity of your promises. Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you so much. Jesus. Empowering him tonight. Jesus. Thank you. Yes, Lord. Thank you. Amen. I, I covered your prayers. I want to tell you something that happened at the boot camp. One day I was at the boot camp. And uh, this man, uh, one day, he was used in visions and dreams and prophetically. He, uh, he was about ready to walk out the door. And he snaps his head around and he looks at me. He says, you're Paul. Out of nowhere. And Pastor Terry talked about Paul. And I kind of looked like I did at Ernie. Well, <laughs> and he said, you're Paul. He said it again. And uh, if you understand that man's walking, everywhere Paul went, there was an enemy. Mm -hmm. It seems I, I get so wore down. Mm -hmm. It was like Pastor Terry talked about. And the fear, uh, he mentioned it while he was praying for me, man. Just the fear, the burden of fear is just such a struggle for me. And I ask you your continuous prayers for me because I... Well, I thought the Lord said you are a nat natural man, a natural man of failure. Feels these things. You have a hard job. Oh, yeah. When you're dealing with what you're dealing with, that's a hard job. Yeah. And you need His hands upon you. Oh, I do. I ask to cover your prayers, please, because yeah. there's that many fear, adversaries. Paul said there's many adversaries. That fear is can be subdued. Right. Absolutely. Yes. I've I've lived in a lot of fear at times. <laughs> it's it's crippling. There's it people is. in this world that are crippled by fear. Right. Yeah, if you had to pick up a okay. Let's do some prayer real